reported death, daily death toll with 92 Wisconsinites losing the battle against COVID-19. That's 92 of our fellow Wisconsinites, 92 people who were somebody's best friend, mom, dad, grandparent, coworker, or neighbor, brother or sister, and somebody who meant a whole lot to somebody else. It's 92. Our hearts and deepest condolences are with their loved ones and their communities. One death is too many, and unfortunately, we know these individuals will not be the last. I warned last week that the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation estimates that if we continue on the path we're on, Wisconsin could see 5,000 deaths by the end of this calendar year. And the gap between now and then, today's numbers and those numbers continue to shrink and quickly. This isn't something happening someplace else to somebody else. It's our friends, our neighbors, and our loved ones who are getting sick. Nearly two months ago now, we issued our current public health emergency on September 22nd. Back then, our seven-day average of daily new positive cases was around 1,800. We had about 104,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases. And we'd lost 1,251 Wisconsinites. Things have worsened quickly since then. As of yesterday, we've now more than tripled our seven-day average, averaging more than 6,400 new positive cases per day. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases has tripled. We now have more than 323,000 positive cases in Wisconsin. We're, we've, we're, we've more than doubled the number of Wisconsinites we've lost. Since I issued my last public health emergency, we've lost another more than 1,500 Wisconsinites, bringing our total number of COVID-19 deaths to 2,741. Well, our current public health emergency expires this Saturday, November 21st. But it's clear, based on where we're headed, we cannot afford to stop or have a gap in some of the only mitigation efforts we still have in place. So today, I'm announcing I'll be declaring a new state of emergency this week and extending our public health emergency until January of next year. We will also be reissuing emergency order number one, requiring fa face coverings in public places. As many of you also know, our current public health emergency and our face coverings order are being challenged in the Wisconsin Supreme Court. Republicans in the legislature support this effort. That's why today I'm also once again calling on Republicans to withdraw their support for this lawsuit and to publicly support our new public health emergency and face coverings order. It's time, folks. We do not get any do-overs here. Enough games. We need you to join the cause, and we need you to start today. We've got a long road ahead of us, Wisconsin, but we know there's light at the end of the tunnel. We've heard promising reports of vaccines on the horizon in the new year, but we need to buckle down and get through this together until then. But as we look forward to that vaccine, we also know that the new year brings the expiration of our federal CARES funding. To date, we've invested nearly $2 billion of federal CARES funding across the state in emergency response and public health measures, as well as economic support initiatives for Wisconsin residences, businesses, and communities. We need robust, we need robust federal support to get us through not only to aid our state response to the virus, but to help families put food on the table, help workers uh, make rent, and help employers keep their doors open and lights on. I will continue to call on our federal partners to pass meaningful, comprehensive support for our state, and I hope Wisconsinites will join me and make calls to their federal representatives as well. As always, Wisconsin, please stay home, Wear a mask if you have to go out, but otherwise stay home. Call it what you want, flattening the curve, stopping the spread, staying safer at home. I'm going to call it what it is. It's about saving lives.